Hey everyone, how you doing? A little different video today. I've been using the Insta360 1R camera as a dash cam for about a month in my pickup. And before that, I used the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Now, both of those cameras do the job, but they really aren't meant to be dash cams. Now, over the past two years, I can't even tell you how many emails I've received from companies asking me to review their dash cam. And I've always declined because I never really thought that it matched the mission of this channel. But then I was contacted not too long ago by the company Vantrue, which is definitely right now the leader in dash cams. And I was asked to review their latest dash cam, the N4. My interest was pretty piqued when I got that email because this is a three channel camera, but I was still kind of apprehensive about putting it up on the channel. Then what I did is I put out a poll to all of you and 1000 of you replied, thank you very much. And two thirds of you want to see a dash cam review. So, here we are. I think you'll find this information valuable, so that's why I decided to do it. So let's take a look at the only three channel dash cam on the market right now, the Vantrue N4. Hey, welcome back everyone. Nice to have you here again. For those of you who are watching for the very first time, my name is Russ and I create videos about drones, action cameras, and other related technology. So have a look around when you're done watching this video. And if you think you can find some value here, click on that subscribe button. And then also you can find additional content on my Instagram and Twitter at 51 drones. Okay, so why a dash cam review? I kind of told you that already, but I think it's important for everyone to consider a dash cam because all it takes is a hit and run and you're gonna wish that you had one. And overall, I think it's a small investment to save you a lot of headaches with insurance companies. If something happens, it can help recover stolen property. And especially if you're a ride share driver, like an Uber driver or something, it provides security. The Vantrue N4 is a three channel dash cam, like I mentioned, that has pretty good resolution. It looks pretty easy to install and use, and it has a proven track record and amazing reviews on Amazon. I'll put a link for it down in the description if you wanna read more about it and also check out those reviews, they're really good. So real quickly, let's take a look at everything that you get in the box. All right, so we're not gonna do a typical unboxing. I think unboxings are a complete waste of time, but some people, make a living off of it, but I'm not going to do that. The box is actually pretty nice. Everything's packaged really nice. So, uh, so Vantrue does a really nice job in the box. You're going to get some reading materials, quick start guide, the full manual. You get a little thing that tells you how to win a GPS receiver mount and then social media stuff. Uh, read the quick start guide. That's going to get you started on how to install and get everything set up. You can read the manual, but you really don't have to. That's why YouTube is here. So go ahead and watch YouTube. You're also going to get this cable right here. This is going to go from the front camera to the rear camera. Plenty long. I think I'm going to put this in my wife's vehicle. She has an SUV and it's pretty long. And it looks like there's going to be plenty of cable for that. You get a USB to USB-C charger and that's awesome. USB-C, thank you for Vantrue. Uh, micro USB is finally on the way out. I'm so happy about that. Here is the power cable. This is going to plug into your port. And then this also has a USB port here so you can plug in your charger for your phone or whatever else you want to put in there. So, and this looks plenty long as well. USB-C there. Here is the suction cup mount. This is what's going to mount on your windshield. And I'll show you how to do that once we get into the vehicle and show you how this gets installed. Here is the rear camera. And this is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. And this shoots 1080p out the back. It has the 3M sticker here, so you know it's not going to go anywhere. Very compact, very inconspicuous. So I think that's kind of nice. Um, you know, I, I just can't believe how small that is. And, uh, and it comes with an extra 3M sticker. Right here is the camera. It is uh, lightweight, pretty lightweight. You never have to worry about that shaking off your window. I think this suction cup is... It's gonna work, but you know, one thing sometimes if these are too heavy, I know that people have had it fall off the uh, windshield if it's uh, too bumpy on the road. So there's the front camera, main camera shoots 1440. So pretty high resolution for a dash cam. Of course, like I said, this is a three channel camera. So you're gonna get 1440 out the front. You're gonna get 1080p for the cabin and then 1080p for the rear camera. So that's very nice. Nice big uh, LED screen here. Nice to have that big screen because you are going to have three channels on here occasionally. You're going to want to see the main camera as well as the um, the rear camera and the cabin camera. Right here is the cabin camera. That is adjustable right there. On the bottom, you're going to find the microphone. And then this is the infrared sensor. So when it gets dark enough, the infrared kicks in. So you're able to see in the dark. On the top of the camera, you're going to find all the controls. 
This is the menu button to get you into the menu. This is also your save button. So if you have an event or something like that, you go ahead and push and hold this and then you hit OK. That's going to save that last video clip. So uh, so it's not going to get deleted by accident. Right here is that's your selector button. And this is how you move around the menu with these two buttons right here, forwards and backwards, actually down and up. Uh, and then this is your power a button right here. I'll show you all that once we get this installed in the vehicle. The nice thing about this is that it's easy to release. This is going to go on your windshield and sometimes you're not going to want to leave this in the vehicle, especially if it's sitting in a parking lot overnight or something like that. You don't want to risk it getting stolen. Of course, it's going to be a deterrent for thieves, but sometimes people are going to steal no matter what. So it's nice to be able to remove it. So to put this on, it's actually pretty easy. This just slides right in there and clicks in there and you're set to go and you want to take the camera off and put it in your glove compartment or you know in your purse or your bag or whatever you just push on this little tab right here and then the camera is going to just slide right off of there so that's going to be pretty nice to have the ability to take it off if you look on the left hand side here this is where you're going to find all your ports the reset button that's a hard reset so that's going to set it back to factory if for some reason it fails uh, this is your micro SD card port this is the USB-C port that's going to lead to the rear um, camera and also the charging port. And then it also has an HD out and that's for if you want to connect this to a monitor, some type of HD monitor and watch your files from the camera to the monitor. That is pretty nice as well. As far as the micro SD card, Vantru recommends using their card because it is pre-formatted. So you just pop it in, start recording. If you're going to use every other, any other brand like the SanDisk, this is what I use for all of my drones, my cameras, everything that I have. I use the SanDisk Extreme. This is a class three speed card, so it's going to work. You have to have a class three card, otherwise it's not going to record. So, uh, but I'll put a link for this one down in the description. This actually handles up to 256 gigabytes, which is really nice to have that amount of storage. Uh, this is a 128, but you can get anything up to 256. So I'll put a link for that as well as the 256 down in the video description. If you happen to get this camera, um, like I said, SanDisk is, has always been a great card for me. So that's everything that you get in the box. So now let's head out to the vehicle. I'll show you how I install this. I'm not going to install it permanently because I do want to try this out for a while before I decide if it's going to be in uh, my wife's vehicle or in my vehicle. So I'm just going to let the wires kind of hang there and uh, and show you what the footage looks like. Of course, that's the most important thing. People want to know what the footage is going to look like and then also test out the audio. You know, it's not known. Dash cams aren't known for having the best audio, but I do want to check it out and uh, and see how it sounds. And then we'll compare the footage a little bit to the uh, to the Insta 360 One R and uh, just show you the difference between those two. So let's get this in the vehicle and show you what it looks like. OK, so that was kind of a pain in the butt, but what I did is I just ran it up the headliner through here and then I came around the side molding, just kind of wedged it in here for now. And, uh, you know, if we decide to stick with this and leave it in here, I'll do a better job of getting in there. And then I ran down the weather stripping here and then I come around the side here. Now this is going to be open here. Um, so I think I can put it behind the weather stripping there as well. And then I just ran it down the bottom and see if you can see this here. I might have to brighten it up a little bit, but uh, and then just come through the bottom of that and then right into the plug-in right there. All right, so next, let's get the rear camera wired. Um, so this will be a lot of fun <laughs> running this all the way to the back. So uh, let's see how that goes. Huh, I was trying to see if they included something I think they should put in here. Just a recommendation, Van True, if you're watching this. Um, I don't have any patience on hand. So you might want to throw a little extra patience in here for install. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you've never installed one of these, it's a little bit frustrating for the first time trying to run that wire through the headliner and through everything. It was just, uh, it was challenging, but I, I did get it. It's not perfect, but I got it good enough to where there's no wire showing. Um, but the first thing that I did is I tried to run it on the bottom and run it underneath the um, thresholds here, thresholds, whatever they're called, kick plates. And I tried to run it up, but I didn't have enough um, wire to get from the rear camera to the front by doing that because I was going down and up. So I had to run it all the way through the upper headliner and uh, and then through some of the, the weather stripping there. But I did get it and uh, we got it hooked up. So let's head down the road. Let's check out the video footage. I know that's what you guys are looking forward to seeing. And then also we'll test out the audio. Uh, I'm going to bring my uh, Sony camera with. I'll have that audio as well. So I'll just show you a comparison of, you know, what it 
good audio sounds like in <laughs> a dash cam. I'm not saying it's not going to be good, but you know, relative to a, a good microphone, it's probably not going to be as good. So, uh, so yeah, let's go check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, so I finally got it all hooked up, and I got a couple of passengers here. Can you say hi? <laughs> so we're testing out all three cameras and it looks like that rear camera I could maybe turn down a little bit more um, we're gonna try to go somewhere where I can get a look at a license plate and see what the license plate looks like but um, so far I think it it looks pretty good on the screen I really won't know what it looks like until I um, download it and put it on the computer and show it to you guys so but um, but like I said the install was a little bit challenging uh, running that rear wire all the way to the back camera, you know, just trying to get everything tucked in there nice. But uh, I would say if you're going to install one of these, put aside about an hour to an hour and a half just to get everything perfect, get all the wires hidden as much as possible because you don't want wires hanging everywhere. So, um, so I'm just going to use this for a while and we're going to see how it looks. And if, uh, if my wife likes it and if she does, we'll leave it here and I'll try to tuck those wires in a little better. So... Uh, as far as the image quality, just let me know what you think down in the comments. I am uh, driving kind of towards the sun right now, so it's a little bit bright. So we're going to try some uh, different directions, driving in different directions, and just see what the exposure looks like. You can adjust the exposure in the menu settings. And so if you're going to be driving, you know, if you're going to be driving against the sun for a long period of time, you can adjust those um, exposure settings to make the, so it's not so dark and or so it's not so blown out. So. Um, the menu actually is really, really easy. Like, it, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as like how you're navigating through the menu. You know, you push the menu button, the, the one on the left to get into the menu, and then you just move around by using the arrows and everything is clearly labeled and it's, it's pretty hard to not understand what's going on when you're, when they're in the menu. So that's pretty nice. It's very user-friendly. And, uh, you know, especially for someone like myself who's never used one of these before, it's nice to um, it's nice to be able to just hook it up, open up the menu, get all the settings going and, and get everything recorded. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the difference between the audio since we're just parked here at a stoplight. So here's the audio from the Vantru. This is straight coming out of the um, coming straight out of the Vantru dash cam and uh, it's probably not going to be as good as the Sony. So here is the audio coming out of my Sony A6600 with the Rode Wireless Go. And just so you guys can kind of get a comparison. You know, you really don't get one of these for the audio. You, you get one of them for the video and just to have that security and being able to, uh, to capture any events that might happen to your vehicle or to someone else. That's the other cool thing about having a dash cam is that you can, you know, maybe save someone's life or you know help someone out if they're battling with their insurance company and you saw the accident and your camera recorded the accident so i think that can be very valuable you know not only for yourself but helping out someone else um and so so that's pretty nice so now we're driving not against the sun and i can see the image quality looks much better um you know it's not so blown out in the sky and and uh, like I said, that front camera is 1440, you know, the one that's facing forward. And the other two right here, the cabin is 1080p, and then the rear is 1080p. So I think that's uh, pretty exceptional for a dash cam. It, you know, if your car pulls up behind you, you're going to be able to make out the, um, the license plate quite clearly. Here we're coming up to a stoplight, and we'll be able to see if we can, uh, how good we can see the license plate in front of us. Looks pretty good. All right, so we're just going to drive around a little bit more and uh, just show you some different clips and show you what the video quality looks like. Let's see how the uh, dash cam does in the car wash. Yeah. Check it out.
Okay, so some final notes, some highlights of this camera, I guess. The biggest feature, of course, is that you have all three channels and they have like a field of view of up to like 165 degrees. I think one is 155, one is 160, and one is 165 degrees field of vision. So nice wide angle view. Um, I did forget to mention that if you run the front camera by itself, like just the forward facing camera, it does record at 1520p, so it's a little better resolution. It's pretty good for a dash cam. The Sony Starvis CMOS sensor is 1.4 aperture uh, facing forward, and then the rear camera is 1.8 aperture on that lens so that's pretty nice in low light and of course it does have infrared night vision and I think that does a pretty nice job as well. This camera is a super capacitor powered camera and it's not lithium powered so it handles extreme temps better than a lithium battery powered one. I think it goes all the way down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit and all the way up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit and then finally, if you want to add the GPS module, and that costs like $22 for that, it does give you the complete solution for a dash cam. You're going to have so much information if you happen to have an event of any kind. So now the negatives I have are number one, I wish it was a little bit easier to install all of the cords, but that's just my lack of patience. If you just take some time, it's really not that bad. Um, the one thing that I am concerned about, a little concerned about the winter, because we do get temps here much lower than 14 degrees uh, during the winter time. So I'm not sure how it's gonna last if we have a couple of weeks straight of like minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. But otherwise so far, I love it. I love this camera and I hope my wife does too. And if she doesn't, I'll just pull it out of her vehicle and I'll put it in my vehicle. Now I'm gonna have a link down in the video description if you wanna purchase this camera or if you wanna learn more about it. I do wanna say a big thank you to Vantru for reaching out to me and for sending this to me to provide you all with an honest review of it. Hit a thumb up on your way out, preferably the one that's pointing up. It's so much more fun. Thank you for watching the entire video today, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Oh,